Hi, Leo. Welcome to 2019 Astro Alchemy with Rain and Moon. And this is a month, Leo, where eighth house matters are front and center. So Pisces is your eighth house. And the eighth house concerns shared resources, sex, and metaphysics. Death is the eighth house. And if you combine a couple of those, specifically death and money, we get inheritances. And there are several things that makes me think that some of you may be having some kind of an issue with inheritance because we have Mercury retrograde starting on March 5th in that eighth house and at 29 degrees of Pisces. And so that could be some kind of breakdown. Um, maybe you thought that things were going well in that area and there is some discovery about a contract, you know, paperwork is mercury and, you know, contracts, I mean, and it gets delayed. But let's start at the beginning of the month. We have the sun in that house in Pisces. So the sun could be shining a light on what is going on here. And um, we also have Venus entering the seventh house in your opposite sign on the first. So there's another thing that is going on as well. We have Venus and Aquarius in that seventh house. Um, the seventh house can be legal matters. Okay. So Venus can be money. Um, and so it's a possibility that when I talk about the eighth house, if you are divorcing a spouse, for instance, then those could be your shared resources with that person that are up for debate or whatever the Mercury retrograde is about researching, trying to find out what's going on with this. So Venus in the seventh can also bring marital harmony. And um, like I said, on the fifth, there's a Mercury retrograde in that eighth house. So communication breakdown with something perhaps concerning money that you are connected to with another person. On the sixth, Uranus goes into Taurus, your 10th house of career. And then on the same day, we have a new moon in that eighth house. For the Uranus in Taurus, this is going to be seven years long Leo. So you better get used to it. Uranus in the 10th house can be wonderful. I think, especially if you are a Leo who happens to be in the entertainment field, whether you're an actor on the stage or whether you're maybe even a YouTube personality, maybe even that would qualify. I don't know, but something where you are, entertaining people, that you're in front of people. Uranus, the 10th house is, is your career, but it's also your place in the world. Uranus can create sudden fame where suddenly a lot of people know who you are. So Uranus has a very uh, erratic pattern attached to it, but and you, so it can bring surprises because it can do something out of the blue. But it can also affect your reputation. Um, you suddenly become a household name or known, at least in your field, out of nowhere. You know, kind of this wild card type of a thing. So that's pretty exciting if you're especially if you're in a field where you want that kind of attention or recognition. 
on the 20th, we have, oh, you know, one thing I want to say, though, about uh, that 10th house Uranus placement is that that could mean that in the next seven years, you may change careers, um, you know, more often than you change your underwear. I mean, you know, obviously I'm being facetious, but you could be, and, and, and it could be something wildly different from what you were doing before. We're not talking about changing jobs like you're doing the same thing, going into a different field. On the 20th, the sun goes into Aries, the cardinal shift, the equinox, power time, turning points for all of us. And we have one of those unusual full moons at zero degrees of the opposite sign of Libra. So what's being activated here, the sun in the fifth house, in the house that it rules, and the full moon in the 11th house. What could this mean, this opposition? Well, I think that one thing that could be happening, uh, and I see it in a couple of places here, is that there might be, you might be kind of shifting your friendships somewhat, uh, Leo, for whatever reason, whether it's because you're growing or just, well, I think that would be the main thing. Because full moons can bring something to an end. And in the 11th house, which is your friendship sector, um, if it's not that, you may be seeing a friend for who they really are. And that might lead to some kind of conflict down the line. Your son in the fifth house can make you very romantic. This is the house that you rule, Leo. So you're right at home here. It's like a double dose of Leo. On the 26th, Venus goes into Pisces, the eighth house. Venus can bring money. But this money could be coming from other people. Now, some will give it to you willingly, as in the form of a gift. Or if this is because of some kind of a will, then that it may be coming from that. Or if you're, if you are coupled, partnered, married, you might have, uh, your spouse may be getting a raise at work and you will benefit from their raise. Venus in the eighth is great for intimacy because it is a deeper level than, you know, the seventh house is that, marriage status. You get married, you have the ring and the cake. And um, that's nice. And you have that status, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, but the eighth house is what, you know, the emotions are. Scorpio rules that house. It's a water house. You know, how do I really feel about this? Venus in the eighth is like digging deep with your love partner. On the 28th, Mercury turns direct in that eighth house. So um, that can be the re resolution of something. Maybe it is monetarily, monetary. Maybe it's, who knows, um, you know, one thing this could be is some kind of um, research that you're doing in terms of occult matters. Now, um, I wonder if Mercury retrograde would be associated with meditation itself. The eighth house isn't meditation per se. I would, I would put the twelfth house as meditation. The eighth house is the occult. So we're talking about, which sounds so ominous, doesn't it? Just talking about metaphysical um, topics, but in addition to that, you know, anything that has to do with the secrets of the universe or secrets in general is the eighth house. But um, also astrology, tarot, these divining tools, these things that people use, um, 
maybe this is a course that you started and you're going back and doing it. Um, yeah, that could be what it is that you had quit and now you're going back, but then, you know, and I'm not saying it's some long thing, but uh, at the end of the month, it gets resolved on the 31st, Mars goes into Gemini and that's your 11th house of friendship. And that's what I was talking about. So we have a full moon in that 11th house and then we have Mars and Mars can bring war, can bring conflict. So you find out your friend has been doing some dirt against you and you confront that person or it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. It could be that you're just more active during this time with friends or with groups of people. Again, uh, there is a connection in this month to your 10th house because for most of the month, Mars is in your 10th house. So this means that you are very ambitious, Leo, in March with Mars in the 10th house. And when Mars goes into 11th house, I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do with a continuation of your career goals. So maybe you have kind of like worked your way up to some position and now you want to really network so that you can open up the field, open, you know, get more contacts because you know that that's going to mean more business. And so it might not be that you're doing this for pleasure. You might be doing this with an eye for um, career success. But I think overall, whatever that eighth house means, that's an important one. Um, so, you know, with Venus in the seventh house, the eighth house could simply be that you're really connecting deeply with your romantic partner with, but this isn't just like somebody you're dating. I mean, this is your marriage partner, your committed partner. And you, you and Aquarius have been through the eclipse cycle in the last couple of years. So that affected your seventh house of Aquarius. Um, and there were some lunar eclipses. There were some times when maybe things were threatening to just break off altogether. And so maybe you have discovered that you have to really um, communicate at a deep level in order to, to stay together. So this may be you starting that process with your partner. And uh, that's, that's very important as far as I'm concerned. If you want to keep, if you want to have a very uh, real type of relationship, not just kind of a surface relationship, you have to, you have to put in the uh, manpower or whatever you want to call it. That doesn't sound very romantic, does it? But in any case, I hope that uh, you got something out of this, Leo. And uh, if you would like a natal chart interpretation or any other type of astrological reading, please check me out. I'm at rainandmoonastrology.com. The link is below. Have a great March. Bye.